So what, um, Gene, now you just spent two weeks at your lake house, right? Yeah. I love it, man. Love it. So you're enjoying the life. Good for you. You deserve it. So what I want to do today is just do a little forecasting. Talk a little bit about a little future casting. What this year looks like, years ahead. I know you've been in high-level meetings with Glenn Sanford, our founder. You've been meeting with Dave Kennard, the new vice president of growth. Uh, Jim, uh, uh, is it White, Jeff Whiteside, is that right? Right, correct. So let's start with talking about uh, Dave Kennard, the new vice president of growth. Kind of who he is, his background, and he is kind of here to just uh, take the gloves off. And it's kind of like uh, having a nice V8 car, which we've had, but now we're adding the supercharger, you know, twin supercharged, overhead, whatever. We got Dave Kennard. Why don't you tell everyone about who Dave is and how he's going to um, help us go to the stratosphere? Sure, sure. I, we are all so excited to have Dave on the team. Uh, uh, Dave Kennard, he's been in the business uh, right around 20 years. And uh, I knew of Dave uh, uh, very early on in my uh, KW career, uh, about 15 years ago. Uh, he was a team leader for KW and came through my training, so I've known him for that long. He's been a, a team leader in their organization. Of course, he sold real estate for years. And then um, and then he worked his way up. He was a regional director. He used to own market centers, and he grew. He's part of the region for KW at the time. About 7,000 agents in Maryland, Pennsylvania, that whole area in the Northeast. Uh, of the eastern New Jersey, that area. So, anyway, what I love about Dave, and I've known him for a long time, is I just can't believe a few years ago I was talking to him because he had taken over. He left KW four years ago and went to a company called Lawn and Foster. They're in the Mid Atlantic region. Uh, they are the one of the largest independent in the United States for a long time. They had set up their training and uh, coaching and consulting. So, that's what they did for Rock and Foster. And Glenn Stanford called me a few years ago and said, do you know of any talented people? And said, I said, I sure do. But he happens to be working for Long and Foster. And Glenn went after uh, Dave and has known Dave for a couple of years, kind of reminded and guided him. And uh, we cannot believe that just in the last month and a half, Dave agreed to come over with us. And uh, he's awesome. to work on the team. He's, so he's the like senior vice president, I think, what's the title? Senior vice president of the road? Yeah. And uh, he can do it. I'm telling you, this guy's done everything in the industry. Great, great energy. Uh, knows it from the agent's point of view, which is, you know, he is an agent and was an agent, as coach and consultant many agents throughout the years. So I just, I can't wait to work with him. That's and awesome. Fun, just, now, are we allowed to give them some ideas of what's coming down the pike, or do we got to wait for EXP corporate to announce it, or? I mean, you probably have to wait, it's, you know, about, you know, some of the, the changes that will be happening. we, we got to wait, right? I, I think I would wait until this week because I, I think they want to announce it, you know, how they are. They want Friday to morning, sure, brothers. Yeah, and, and make sure that everybody on our board knows what they're doing and everybody in transactions and everybody. So I would wait. So it's exciting. Yeah. We're bringing back some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So... I guess we can tell them, catch the Friday morning uh, State of the Union Address by EXP this Friday. I believe that's, it. Rob, is that 8 a.m. Rob, is that 8 a.m. Pacific? Every Friday. Which is, um, the reason I don't know is I'm golfing every Friday. You should know, I'm golfing. But the rest of you should go to that meeting. I'm always there. I'm, I have priorities here. But um, it's 11 a.m. Eastern, no, 8 a.m. Central, and 8 a.m. Pacific. Yeah, so obviously wherever you are, but uh, chances are there's going to be some big announcements that are super favorable, and you guys are going to be doing cartwheels. We're hoping if it doesn't come out this Friday, it'll be next Friday, but definitely if you can, and that'll be at what June, the main auditorium, right? Yes, yes. And a lot of times, uh, uh, as you know, if I can't make it, what I do is I just look at it later. Yeah, you know, I download those things later. You know, if I'm making a birdie, you know, and I'm meeting you on it, <laughs> a birdie, then I'll just watch it later. 
Did you beat me a couple of times? I remember we played the Cowboy Golf Course and you hit a downhill 10 foot curve. I'm still pissed. Can I say that on air? I'm still mad about that. He drains this, oh, like, I got him, I got him. He's in a three putt for sure, and you made it to beat me. So it's like the worst. Uh, I bet you it's one of your favorite blues, though, wasn't it? Uh, of course. So, um, so Dave Kennard, we some great stuff there. Also, we have a new uh, leader in our company called Jeff Whiteside. I believe I said his name right. And can you talk about what Jeff, is, what his title is, and, and maybe what some of the things he'll be working on this year? Right. Now, Jeff is, I'm very, very excited because Jeff came from the corporate world, and Jeff is working uh, with uh, EXPI, E-R-C-F-O, for EXPI, not EXP Realty. We still have an out of gold, um, uh, gold is that, but uh, Jeff is the CFO. Now, what he's going to do with that CFO position, his major focus is mergers and acquisitions. He is a merger and acquisition specialist, uh, works for Capital One all over the world and other big corporations to do mergers and acquisitions. Yeah, Cap so, Capital uh, One's been okay, huh? I think they've done all right. Yeah. yeah. But he lives in upstate New York, but what's great about Jeff is he understands, uh, you know, this last year, we, you know, as you know, we purchased Rubella. We purchased Rubella. It is now ours. That was an exciting thing, and that took quite a while to do. If we would have had Jeff at that side, I think maybe Jeff could have got it done a little bit quicker. You know what I mean? Yeah. He used to those negotiations. Now, now, for everybody in here, I'm sure not 80% of you know, but 20% of you that don't know, Verbella is what you're sitting in. They designed the EXP world. So our, our you know, auditoriums, classrooms, now what we're calling project rooms, um, where all the state brokers work, where we live, they built it, but we didn't own it. So uh, again, what Gene's saying is we purchased it, what, like a couple months ago? Yes, and so we own our own platform. I mean, that's the vernacular yeah. right in the tech world. We right. Own our own platform that we're using, um, and, and that's very, very exciting. Now, what Jeff's going to do in 2019, uh, Glenn, Glenn announced, of course, in our, our convention, it's going to be the year that we start getting into auxiliary services, which is mortgage, title, insurance, home warranty, and other partnerships. I love it. it. I love it. Yeah. So that's why when I when I talked to Jeff and got to know him as a board member, because I am on the board for the for the XBI, man, what talent we have to go to go look into those things and, and work the best thing we can for the XBI. For mm -hmm. our love it, love it. By the way, while we're sitting here, I'm looking at the um the main auditorium attraction services. How are we going to still get clicked on and gone to attraction services, team services, the tech outpost, transaction team accounting, agent operating agent experience, brokerage operations. If you've not been to brokerage operations and clicked on your state and you see that map in the United States, and they got up and talked to your state broker in person or the assistant state to the state broker, state brokers in the meeting. Canadian operations, human resources, the productivity center, the EXP main office. I mean, if you're not going to these things and meeting people, go, who are you? How can you help me? I, I mean, that's job A, that's position A. And then plugging into the world, going to classes, plugging in the world. Hey, Gene, how important is, is workplace to everybody according to Glenn Sanford? Oh, it's, it's the number one way. You're going to communicate, uh, you know, at least for the next few years until something else comes out. So, workplace to me, if you're not communicating in workplace, you get it. there's so many groups in the workplace that you can be a part of. Uh, referral networks, uh, you know, top, top icon networks, your state networks are in. We're going to be using workplace. And, and, and I'm telling you guys, I've got better response. You know, I kind of emailing people, uh, you know, Brent, right? And, and doing all the old fashioned ways. I, I can go on workplace and message them. You can either, uh, you know, private message them in a group or just private message. And I get response like crazy. And for all your people that, 
you need to know if you want to get a hold of your broker or someone or transactions or whatever, go through Workplace. Get a hold of them there if you can't get a hold of them in the cloud, right? You go to that thing and you know you go through the cloud and they're not there or whatever. Contact them via Workplace. I get so much better response. Love it, love it. Marguerite uh, was here typing. She just talked about how workplace messaging is awesome. I'm telling you, I'll message Glenn Sanford, uh, Mary Francis, um, anybody, Dave Kennard, and they hit you right back. Sending an email, not so good. So we're trying to tell you guys the best way to communicate is through workplace and just send them an instant message. They're super, super responsive and it's awesome. So um, let, let's shift gears a little bit and um, and talk about what this company could look like in the next two, three years. Again, the theme of today is future casting and envision EXP two, three, four, five years from now. Do you, uh, I've always heard that Australia and New Zealand are next for expansion. Of course, there's Mexico, Central, and South America. The Philippines, very exciting. Japan, all that, the UK, Europe. But, um, you know, have you heard that it's Australia and New Zealand next team? Or are you, uh, you know, you know, what have you heard about international expansion? We open Canada, we're opening more provinces in Canada, we're all the big ones that are continuing to grow across Canada. But what have you heard, Gene? Well, I've heard that this is, this is the year uh, Glenn has set it up on stage along with the uh, auxiliary services. And this is the year we're going to go international. I think keep all your options open. I think what we said in the beginning is we'll probably go to English speaking countries first. Which, which tell everybody why. I mean, there's obvious well, reasons. It's, but... it's just a lot easier. And yeah. A lot of them, and a lot of them actually are countries that, 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 know, that know MLS is just like us. For example, Australia. Zealand are very easy to go into because they have a MLS system just like the United States. And so there's a lot of countries that have an MLS system that don't. And some don't want them, some don't. So uh, we're analyzing all those things. But here's what I would say. We're not going to go into a country that we don't have a good leader, right? That we don't have someone that really, we really feel we could go either merge with, like has a, has a company, so they've got all the back end by all figured out for us. Right. So that'd be the easy way. That'd be the easy way, right? We find a, a company with two, three, four hundred agents in another country, and he goes, Well, I've already got all the infrastructure, and, and, you know, because that way we can go in very easily. Or we need a leader, because we know it's going to be leadership, right? Because we find the friend go of that area. They go, Yeah, I'm ready to go. I, I know how to do it. Whatever. And then everybody else can go on. We have a workplace site for international, right? And start start making conversations. Start 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 going on that workplace site. Say, hey guys, I think I've got somebody for France. Right? I've got somebody for this. Who should I be talking to? Who should, who's who's looking that way too? So that we uh, just keep keep in touch with your people. This is the year we're going to do some things. Can't tell you where it's going to be first, but it's going to happen. And this is so exciting. I think 2019 is going to be groundbreaking, especially when the ancillary companies that we team up with, and I believe you mentioned it, with possibly a home warranty, uh, moving, maybe mortgage, title, escrow. Um, what, what do you think would be the first company that we partner with in your in your best guess, uh, Gene? Well, would it be would it be a home warranty company? Would it be a mortgage, or what do you see? I, I don't know because I think it's all relationships and how far along we are in that process. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, it could, it could even be title. Because, right. Uh, uh, some of our top people have uh, uh, relationships with title companies, uh, but I think any of them, uh, and we're doing our due diligence to make sure it's the right thing to do. Uh, Right. Yeah, you guys have got connections in that regard. Uh, you know, uh, bring them to Jeff White's right side. Now, it seems like if we partner with a home warranty company, let's say there's an awesome home warranty company in Colorado, that's really not going to work. We have to pick one that's national, like 
a Fidelity Home Warranty or American Home Shield. Same thing with mortgage and title. But it's a great mortgage company on the West Coast. Would you agree whoever our partners will be, they're going to have to have a, a national influence? Or I don't know. I'm, I'm just asking you, Gene, and I'm sure other people have yeah. these questions. Yeah, yeah. I would think, I would think on the mortgage and title side, that's definitely going to be interesting. Right? Yeah. For sure. For sure. Okay. And, and then I think on the other ones, you know, some, some things can be rolled out, as you know. Some uh -huh. can be perfect with 50 states. Uh, right. But, uh, we have different relationships with different states on different things. But, and the insurance, I, I think people don't even understand how big insurance is. Because I've looked into it, guys. Do, uh, yeah, insurance is huge because they start off with home loan, home loan, you know, homeowners, right? Right. But then all of a sudden, then you've got them as a client. And you get the car and everything. And Auto, you know, life, health, yeah. it all spins out. Yeah, 90% of the people that you home uh, do their insurance don't switch. Yeah. 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 Now, for everyone in the, in the audience, there's a lot of new people. You know, EXPI, one of their holdings, which is, you know, the, the, the mother company, and that's who your stock is in, one of their holdings is EXP Realty. The stock awards you're getting are not in EXP Realty. They are in EXPI, the, the, the parent corporation. So as they own mortgage and title and escrow and, uh, and insurance and, and home warranty and we partner, yeah, and you use those companies, it'll benefit the parent company, EXPI, and we own stock in EXPI. So who's that going to benefit? Whereas all my years at Remax and all my years at Keller Williams, over two decades, over 20 years, when they had said, hey, who's this mortgage broker? We're like, yeah, whatever, right? Because we didn't own it. We didn't, it was great for the owner of that franchise and for the reach owners, but as agents at, at Cobalt Banker and Remax and Keller Williams, it meant nothing to us. And so I think, I think, the agents are really going to embrace these companies. Do they have to? Not at all. I think that was a huge mistake Keller Williams made, kind of mandating that their agents promote Keller Mortgage or whatever they were doing by signing all these disclosures saying your agent has made you aware that if you don't go with this company, you're giving away X. So then the agent would lose, lose control of who's doing the mortgage and just go to whoever. You know, none of us like to have things forced on us. And so what do, what do you think of that there, Gene? Are we going to force people to use these companies or are we just going to encourage them to use them? Yeah, we would never force anybody to use the company. Uh, and, but I think what you described is the number one reason when I met the man uh, four years ago and he talked about this corporation. I went, well, this is revolutionary. We, we all own stock as a corporation. And he goes, yeah. I said, well, well, that's a game changer. He said, well, why? And I said, well, listen, if we all have these other companies that, that you and I both brand, you know, brand and own and other franchises, yep. but, but I really believe they would use the, the our auxiliary companies if they all own stock and it all rolls up. Yep. And the way you described it is brilliant. And I really do think the majority of us are going to go with shoes. Yeah, I'll go with that side of the company, the mortgage company. And again, it's got to be great service, right? Right. Or, or Fidelity yeah. Home Warranty. They're an excellent company. Right. I use them now. Right. But, um, right. yeah, that, that's exciting to, to have that happen. Um, I was going to tell you, um, I, I totally lost my train of thought there on the, on the warranty companies and, and the growth. She was going to make this amazing point that we spoke on. But, um, um, it, it's pretty exciting because, you know, Dave Lindergar pretty much has had all the stock of Raymax. He's a billionaire. Gary Keller has all the stock of, of Keller Williams. He's a billionaire. And uh, and so this is a big deal. Uh, you know, this is, this is truly a rising tide rises all ships. Some of you are exceeding, succeeding at a high level with attraction. Some of you are not. Um, it took Keller Williams nine years to recruit me. And when I came, I brought a ton of people with me, right? It may take you guys a year or two or three or four to recruit somebody. It honestly, if I was going to be honest, and I'm going to be honest, 
it took me from 1997 to about 2000, I would say 10, which means I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. It took me 13 years to figure out how to be a listing agent. And you know when I figured it out? When I got mad enough, when I got angry enough, when I got ticked off is a nice way of putting it. That nobody but myself would like, I will figure out how to become a listing agent that kills me. And once I hit that kind of revolution, I went on within a few years to be carrying 18 to 28 listings. I didn't have to run around like a dog showing property to buyers. I got my life back and it always had good boundaries. But man, when you when you have tons of listings, you literally can go to work at 10, leave at three, and take Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays off. And when people call you desperate to present offers, you tell your seller, we're not presenting offers till Monday night. Repeat after me, you will not look at them. And then they call me, you gotta present. I'm sorry, my seller said he absolutely won't. Why? Because I coached him, because I didn't want to work. I want to go to Lake Tahoe. I want to be with my family at the beach. And so you, it's an amazing, but my point is, some of you are succeeding in attraction at a high level. Some of you are not. Here's the good news. And Gene, I want you to chime in. The biggest room in the world is what? The room for improvement. And you know what? So what if you're not good at it now? You can learn to be good at it and improve. And then you will acquire more stock. And you will have a, a bigger ownership position in this company. Gene, you agree, disagree? What are your thoughts on some of that? Maybe for agents who are struggling, and not figuring out the the agent attraction part. Well, I, I would add this because I've taught agent attraction, you know, for almost twenty years now, and and when I teach it, I tell folks it, it's a different skill set. Let's think about it, guys. Um, you know, showing a buyer around, right? They've already made the decision that they're going to purchase a home. They just don't know which one. Even when somebody wants to sell their home. They make a decision to make a move. And when they come to you, all you're trying to do is solve their needs. Well, guess what? When you're when you're attracting people, they haven't made that decision to move. In fact, you think about it, guys, they really don't want to move. They've been at their company for 15 years, 10 years, 5 years, 20 years, and they're really not even thinking about it. And you're asking them to move. It's a different way. You, you have to learn different skills, Brad. You have to learn different skills to become a listing agent, didn't you? Absolutely, yeah. Right? Right? You said, okay, I'm finally tired. Well, I'm telling you, if you want to learn the skills on attraction, we will teach it to you. I will teach it to you. We will teach you over and over. It's a different skill set. And you have to wait. I've got somebody joining next week that I talked to three and a half years ago. And if I wasn't persistent, and when I say persistent, I don't want you bugging people. That's not for, you know, don't, don't just hound them. Guess what? I, I just stay in touch very, very nicely. You know, text them every now and then. But staying in touch and doing the presentation, because I'm asking them to get divorced. Guess what? So when you look at it, they get away for 24 years. And it may take some time. Oh. We, Gene, we are divorce specialists. I, I could help myself. <laughs> call, call Frederick and go. <laughs> uh, we just want to stay together, but otherwise. <laughs> no, 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 but helping people get divorced in their companies, right? <laughs> oh, it's funny. It, is, it, is, it is a different skill set, right? Right. And, and you know, like, it just, in fact, most of the people that I've attracted to ESP and they want unhappy. The biggest number is that, well, why can't I find somebody that's unhappy that's looking to move, right? Yeah. 99% of the people are not unhappy. Right. They're not looking to move. So we have to create a situation where uh, uh, Prince asked me to share this. I, uh, I read a housing quote years ago, guys. And I put it up on the wall for years. And the company code is that no, there's a gate of change on everybody. And that gate 
cannot be open from the outside. No amount of persuasion, sales skills, you know, really cool scripts can make the gate be open. Wow. It can only be open. The gate of change can only be open from where? The inside. Yep. So once I put that up on my board, I realized when I, when I talk to people, I can tell them if their gate's open or not. If their gate is shut, hey, I'm not thinking of moving right now. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll just stay in touch. Yep. And then, and then, you know, this person that I'm actually three and a half years later, just so you know, I made the presentation so cool. four times. Not once, not twice. Mm -hmm. This is the fourth time she was out of my lake house. And I did the presentation for the fourth time. And she asked more questions. <laughs> right. And finally, finally, guess what? Game's open. Yep. Game's open. I'm coming in a week. But I heard that you're just hanging out with her at the lake house or somebody like, well, I don't have a lake house. Yeah. We'll take your friend to dinner. I got many friends that are not AHP. I take them out to sushi, we'll go see movies together, we'll grab breakfast or coffee. I'm just a friend and I don't talk about EXP when I'm with them unless they pry it out of me. Uh, otherwise, you can become like a resounding gong, right? You can be annoying, right, Gene? Right. Yeah. You just be yourself. That's the other thing I always tell folks. Yeah, I go hang out with those patients. Don't talk. <laughs> you yeah. Don't talk about what's going on do talk about real estate, help them sell more homes, help them learn how to hire their first assistant, right, Gene? And, and right. listing tips, you know, come from value and contribution. Exactly. And just have fun. Yep. That's what with them. That, don't, don't let their game is open. This is the hardest thing. I'm attracted. We have to wait for the game to be open. You can't knock it down. And it's very hard for you guys. Because the salespeople, we go, wait, 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 I, I, you know, I know I can sell with that home, I'll just knock it down. Well, no, you can't. No, yeah. attraction. Yep. Well, you go ahead. And I love the I love the word attraction. Because when you think about it, it is the law of attraction, right? That whole thing. It's gotta be attractive to us guys. You can't just recruit them, right? It's not like we're gonna pay them more money to be here. Yeah. You know? We're we're not selling spas, right? We're not selling hot hot spas. It, it's right. it's a you know, hey two things, Gene. Uh, number one, I think the chef um, agents are suffering right now, and they're like, oh my gosh, you want me to change companies? I'm suffering, and they're really focused on sales. So that's one thing, and I think as the shift continues, I I personally believe the floodgates are going to open in the next three to six months, maybe nine months. The shift we hit last summer, and it's still here. And people are feeling it, but it, I believe get ready because it's coming and our company's closed for growth. That's number one. Um, real quick, 30 seconds. Do you agree with that or disagree? Or what are your thoughts, Dean? Well, I agree that number one, the shift is continuing. Number two, yeah. you're going to find out is people aren't ready to retire. Yeah. They're not ready to retire. They're not ready to retire. Yeah. And I said, well, what did you hear about it? Stocks on the NASDAQ now. We're ringing the bell next month in the New York yeah. Stock Exchange. The whole financial world's going to go, hey, it's the, what's that? A real estate company. The whole world, worldwide, with the letters EXP in February. And I believe you're going to be there ringing that bell, aren't you, Yeah, January 30th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, East Coast time. We get to ring the closing bell for NASDAQ. And I have an interview this morning with the agency that you guys used to be a stockbroker. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Hey, Gene, closing thoughts for people in the auditorium that, you know, this, this, this meeting that I do is really about building an organization and creating revenue share and stock. This isn't about selling homes. We're all about selling homes. Almost all the meetings in the cloud are training for selling homes. This one is not. So everyone here wants, wants to attract agents. So closing thoughts, how important is our event next week in Scottsdale, Monday evening at seven over Wednesday at one? 
how important is when we get there and hear over 25 different speakers. Glenn Sanford will be sharing. You're going to be sharing. It, it, oh, tons of people, 25 different speakers. How important is that to them to really getting off to the right start this year, not waiting until June to our uh, shareholder convention in Orlando? It, it would to me, uh, Brent, it's, it's a no brainer, but it's also, if you really want to learn how to do it, you have to be around the other people that are doing it. So you're going to hear 25 speakers that have done it, that are doing it at different levels. That uh, maybe not, some of them didn't even do it as a beginning, just like yourself. I have people right now calling me, well, Gene, I didn't do anything last year. How do I get back into it this year? I go, well, first of all, go to Brent's meeting. That's exactly what I go on. You go to Scottsdale and get around the other attractors. You're going to learn so much in a couple of days. It's like it's like a big mastermind on steroids with fun. <laughs> I love it. And I, and I emphasize the fun. Yeah. Because we're bringing fun back into this world. And uh, so that's, that's my, I, would, I just couldn't be, just don't miss it. I would not miss it. Absolutely. Now, for everybody listening, the hotel is sold out. Every room is sold out. They do have rooms available at 650 a night. I just had a guest book two nights at 650 a night. So he's going to pay 1300 plus taxes for two nights. Because I'm staying at the hotel, I don't care. If you have not received the email that went out to everybody, email us at james at rentboat.com. James at rentboat.com. We will send you a link. We've, we have three hotels that are across the street from the JW Marriott, and they are uh, Marriott Residence Inn, the Holiday Inn, and the other one is called the Cambria Inn. They're very reasonably priced. The Holiday Inn is brand new, super Scott Stylish. I, I, have, I know people that have stayed there, they go, it's totally nice. And so, um, anyways, you have choices that are very affordable and a three minute Uber drive. From the resort, you can be at the resort all day, all evening, go to lunch, to dinners, hang out, and then at night just screw them back over. It's not the end of the world. But the event itself is not sold out. We've got room for maybe 80 more people to come, then we'll be sold out. But as far as the rooms, pretty much sold out unless you want to drop some big dollars off the room at 650 a night. So just stay across the street and see what happens. All right. Well, Gene, thank you for taking time to be on today. My pleasure. My pleasure. Enjoy the uh, guys. 2019 is going to be epic. That's my new word. Epic. I like the word epic for 2000. That's everybody. Adopt that word for 2019. Epic. Gene, what a way to wrap it up. Love everybody. Love you, Gene. We'll see you next Thank Monday. You All right. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. And I actually probably will not be doing this meeting next Monday because I'm going to be golfing in Scottsdale. So probably no meeting next week. Okay, we'll put an email out. That's my original thoughts right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sit up front for about five minutes and take questions. So if anybody has a question, uh, come cruise on over. And I'll be happy to answer any questions about Scottsdale or agent attraction, whatever. I'll hang out here for a minute. Sam, how you doing? Awesome, man. You have a question? You can say hi. What what city in Utah, Sam? Salt Lake, baby. The city in the city in Utah. Cool, man. Right. Was that your question? Yeah. Oh man, I, I always well, a I always have watched the video first. I don't like guests to lunch and learn unless they've seen the webinar. That's me. So you know, I call up Sam. Where go? How you been, man? I, I sold you the house on Castle Peak a year ago or five years ago, or I. 
I remember you from Century 21 10 years ago. You were new, I was new. We went to Century 21's new agent, blah, blah. Do you remember me, Sam? Tell me you don't. Say, I don't remember you. I don't remember you. I'll go back. It's not important, but I totally never forgot you, Sam. Now, are you still there in Salt Lake? You're still working for Cobo Baker? Yeah. Awesome. How's it going? Of course it is. I, I knew you'd kill it. Well, the reason I'm calling you, I don't know, you obviously don't remember me, but I'm out here in Northern California. I'm dying to know, have you heard of this new real estate model called EXP Realty? Have you heard about it yet? You must have. Say, yeah, like three different times, see them on Facebook. Say that. Yep. Uh, when, by the way, when I came to Rich Eha, he said, I've had 10 people talk to me, no thank you. Boom, just like that. And that was two years ago. And, and so I'm going to say the same thing to you that I said to, to Rick. Well, Sam, that's awesome. Have you actually seen their webinar? And you would say, what? What would you have said if I talked to you about EXP? What would you have said? Yeah. You'd already seen the webinar, really? Yeah. Okay, awesome. And you actually watched it to the end and saw how you can create a couple million dollars a year in revenue share. I saw most of it in $10. Okay, so there you go. That That's why you're not super excited about the company. The last 20% will blow your mind. Sam, uh, I'll never forget you. I was so impressed with you. If I send it to you, would you watch the last part? Because I'm telling you that the fastest growing real estate model in the, com in the country. Tell me no, you're just too dang busy. Tell me no. Uh, awesome, Sam. Well, um, this certainly isn't about switching companies, but thanks for at least talking to me today, man. And uh, good luck in Salt Lake. Kill it. I don't sit there and beat on them. You guys may beat on them. I don't. I move on. I'm looking for people who are open, whose gates are open, or or maybe they they didn't even know they were looking. Like I was never leaving Kevin Williams, but I just wanted their opinion. And so um, you know, I took a real hard approach to stand there to show you. I get I get that stuff too. You know how it normally goes? Tell, say yeah, I'll give it a look. Tell me yeah, I'll, I'll watch the webinar. No, I haven't seen it. And yes, I'll watch it. Say that. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. Right? Yeah, that's how it goes, you guys. That's how usually it goes. I would say awesome, and then say, hey, you got something you can email me. And now I can. It's something I got to show you, Sam. Hey, what's your schedule like later this week or next week? Like for me, my slow days are Wednesdays and Fridays. I know we're slammed all the time, but for me, Wednesday's not so busy. Friday's kind of my goof off day. Do you have a day that's less busier than others? And then say, man, I'm slammed all the time. Tell me you're busy all the time. I'm, I'm slammed all the time. Sam, I totally get it. So am I. But come on, man. You're not you're not on the Terminator. You just thought of your day or oh, morning, maybe Friday morning, so you're not as busy. Would it be? Well, how about for you? If you had to pick that day, what would it be? Come on, Sam. I could, I could probably See how I did that? I said, great. Now, here's what I think would be best if we did it early. Grab a cup of coffee, although I know you're from Salt Lake, so maybe you don't drink coffee. Get some hot tea, whatever it is. Or, um, But here's the deal. <laughs> but here's the deal. Let's meet at 7 a.m. before your day gets crazy, or 7.30, maybe 8 at the latest, because what I don't want is your phone blowing up and you're being distracted. So can we do something early morning, Sam? I mean, I'll do 6 a.m. I don't care. This is important. Okay, so what do you want? Six, seven, eight? What's best for you, Sam? Okay, so here's what I need you. It's 7 a.m. I need you on your couch, at your house, with a laptop in your lap, the fireplace on, some hot cocoa, coffee, whatever your deal is. And I, I, I want to share this with you. You're going to be blown away. Sound good, Sam? All right. Awesome. I'm going to text you a reminder Thursday night you don't, so you don't forget. Personally, I forgot my appointment. Nobody texted me a reminder, and I, I was off and about and totally missed my appointment. So I'm, I will text you a reminder Friday night. Read your calendar and, and just be ready to go. Okay, Sam?
Awesome, man. Talk to you then. And then, so I text him that, hey, Sam, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 7. Don't forget, smiley face. He may or may not respond. It's 6 30 a.m. I text him again, hey, Sam, we're on 30 minutes. Don't forget, smiley face. And guess what? My people show up to the appointment. And then when I call him, ring, ring, Sam, say hello. Hello. Hey, Sam, Brent over here. Hey, are you in front of your, 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 your fireplace on the couch, like I said? No, I'm at the coffee table, but I'm ready to go. Whatever. It doesn't even matter. I said, awesome. Okay, so here we go. Type this in. Ready? It's the new re.com. And then watch this, and then we're going to talk when it's over, okay? Or I may, I'm going to email you right now a video of me in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I'm actually on stage. It's one of the newest, more updated ones, and you can watch that. You'll see me on stage live, and then we'll talk when it's over. You can see this Brent Gove guy on stage. He's amazing. He's super good looking. And, um, you know, however you want to say it, ha uh -huh. But, um, and then that's how I do it. So many of you text the link or email when they ask you to email or text with those. No, I don't. I got to share it with you. How many of you e email your listing presentation or do you take the time to show up? So my advice is take the time to show up to your listing appointment. You what? Build rapport. Look at the house. Do a presentation. It takes an hour. You, you did that? Yeah, I did that with every single one of my people. That's why I got 48 months. Stop texting and emailing these links. Stop it. Stop it. It's like drugs. Just say no. Sam, was that helpful at all? That's very helpful. I thought it was really good myself. <laughs> hey, um, uh, Brent Conway standing behind you. It looks like he's starting a Congo line. Brent, did you uh, did you have a question there, buddy? Nice app, by the way. We got the Tom Landry app. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Sam. All right. So, Sam, Brent, did you have a quick question before I roll? Because I do have to roll right after this. Yeah. Question out there. What? Lost your bud, you there? Yeah. So click on the golf tab. If you guys have registered for the event and, and, and paid your $99, you'll be have a landed wait for you to check in. But you also need to go down and click on golf. You've got to click on that golf let link to let the course know you're coming. We're doing a 9 a.m. shotgun start. It's going to be a blast. And by the way, by going to that event, when I went to my event, I didn't have anybody either. But I went, and then I came back and just started uh, crushing it. And, and some of you, I get it. Maybe you've been to one in the past or whatever. You know, all I can say is when you get frustrated enough, when you get mad enough, ticked enough, I'll, I'll leave the verbiage there. It's, <laughs> you get angry enough. You'll change. You'll figure it out. And that's how I learned how to do listings. And that's how I learned how to attract agents is when you look in the mirror and you only blame yourself because you stop buying your own excuses. You're like the greatest salesman in the world for excuses. And your number one customer is yourself. And the only person you're hurting is your spouse and your kids. Stop buying your stuff. Stop offering excuses to yourself and go kill this thing. So, man, I'm so pumped. Brent, I really pray you get over there. By the way, I had a friend from Portland just buy a round trip ticket to uh, Phoenix. You fly into Phoenix. You can fly in. If you really crunch for time, you can fly in Tuesday. Skip the golf tournament. It starts at 3 on Tuesday, goes till 6. We're all going out to dinner, having fun that night. And it starts up on Wednesday morning at 9 and goes till 1. And you can fly out Wednesday afternoon. So you actually be there for one night. And you're only missing the big welcome party Monday night at 7. And the golf tournament or spa treatments you would do on Tuesday or just hanging out by the pool or whatever and, and hanging out. So get out there. It's going to be awesome. Heidi has a question. Go ahead, Heidi. What's your question? At least I see a hand. Well, it's more of an observation, something I'm kind of perplexed about. And I'm new with this, brand new with this. Okay. When I talk to people from Remax and Cobalt Bay, they're almost empty. Except for Keller Williams, they're more open, more open, more receptive 
Right. But right. well, I told you to a women's person, they slam the door. And I would think of anybody out there who would understand revolutionary and that. So, yeah, let me address that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, I mean, Keller Williams has always been famous for the Keller Kool Aid Heidi. But one thing the companies done is they really educated their agents on why this is a terrible idea. I mean, do you, you think you're going to go down without swinging? Yes, it's better. Please leave them 100,000 of you and just bankrupt our billion dollar company overnight. No, and Remax is doing the same thing. Uh, Cobalt Banker sent you 21. Other companies, better homes seem to be late to the party. Remax is doing a better job, but the number one company that's high a lot of training and, and their agents aren't discovering. Now, Noli Adams, he wears a cowboy hat. He's the number one short sale guy. Uh, he's the, he's like iconic, super mega star at Keller Williams. He's been on all the stages. He's, a, he's from Texas. Noli Adams just joined EXP last week. This happens week after week. They continue to lose top stars. Noli said, I absolutely wasn't interested but they said, would you at least educate yourself on the model? You don't have to do it. You don't have to come. But would you at least look? Now, that took somebody who had a good relationship with all these. Fine, I'll look. I'll look. And he looked and he's like, oh, my gosh. Ask questions. Got his questions answered. Bam. Switches. We're, this is like um, the Golden State Warriors losing Steph Curry. This is like Michael Jordan when he was playing for the Bulls leaving. This is like a big deal. And this happens all the time. So yes, Heidi uh, Keller, and, and they're smart. And would you, why would they do that? So you really got to get the people, when you say stuff like this, if you were my friend and you were at Keller Williams, Heidi, I would say, look, Heidi, you're not allowed to come to EXP. You're not even heard. I'm telling you right now, you, you can't come to EXP. You have to stay at Remax. You're not allowed to leave Remax. You're not allowed to leave Keller Williams. But listen to me. We've been friends. We would at least look at the model. I want you to look at it objectively and understand what you're pushing away. You don't have to do it, but as friends, I expect you to look. If you have any respect for me, I expect you to look. Would you look? And if they could go, no, I won't look. Well, that just means an odd respect for you. Don't take it hard. Move on. But when they look, they will tend to ask questions and go, I mean, it is financially irresponsible not to be at EXP. The reason they're not here is because they either own their franchise and they can't be here, or they're, or they're regional owners and they're so wrapped into what they're doing, or they're just, they've been coached, and you're gonna help break through. And that's what this meeting's about. So I won't be doing this next Monday because I'm gone in Scottsdale. But, um, so we'll do it again. Uh, what? Keller Williams, it's, like a it, it's not a cult at all. It's a wonderful, great company. They're just they're circling their wagons. This Remax is doing in Cold World Century 21. It, it's not a cult at all. I worked for eight years. It's a, it's phenomenal. If you went away, I'd go back. Um, it's a great company. Now, some people don't like it, didn't like their office trophy. It's always the people. It, it is a phenomenal company. I have no problem saying that. It's the second best real estate company in America. In my opinion, I'm allowed to have my opinion. Hands down, second best. Um, you just can't compare the two. You know, they're if you compare them to what we have to offer, they're a two or a ten. And the reason is, is it's not because our training's better. It's because they're all on treadmills, running their tails off, hooked up to IV trips, drips, start trying not to get divorced, and can't crank out 30, 40, 50 sales every year. Is that what their lifestyle used to when the shift happens? They're in trouble and they're in big trouble and they're worried about keeping their cars, they're worried about keeping their homes. And so, this is about developing a, uh, a strategy to have that secondary income where even if you're just making three, four, five, six, seven thousand a month, it helps calm your nerves a lot. And you don't have to do it every day, all day long, blah, 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 blah. You just have to carve out one day a week. And make a few phone calls. Man, I went way over today, and I actually have a four o'clock phone. So I gotta go, guys. Awesome. Calm to Scottsdale. Make it happen. I'm telling you, you're serious. Get your tail to Scottsdale. If you're getting married next week, get married in Scottsdale.
Love you guys. See you later. Bye.